All right, guys. It is Friday, October 21st, 2022, at 8.28 p.m. All right. Let's start with daily versus dot net verse of the day. It says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Hebrews 10.23 All right. Let's start with an asteroid. Asteroid 2022 UR4 flew past the Earth at 0 0.04 lunar distances. That is a very short distance from Earth. That is like very close. It says a newly discovered asteroid designated 2022 UR4 flew past Earth at a distance of 0 0.04 lunar distances. Uh, 10,591 miles from the center of our planet at 2245 UTC on October 20th, 2022. All right, also, we're having partial solar eclipse on October 25th. A partial solar eclipse visible from the northern hemisphere will take place on October 25th, 2022. Most of Europe, the Middle East, Central Asia, and Northeastern Africa will be in the path of the moon's penumbral shadow on this day. All right, guys. Next, higher cost of living expected after top food production regions suffer major flooding in Australia. All right. So, drier weather has returned to flood affect parts of Victoria, Tasmania, and New South Wales on Monday, October 17th. However, flood waters remain high and continue to rise at some locations. Dry conditions will be short-lived as more widespread rain and storms are forecast across eastern Australia this week. It says Victoria was the worst affected state last week with some towns experiencing more than a month's worth of rain and the highest river peaks in decades. While thousands of people were ordered to evacuate their homes in Victoria and New South Wales, the floods resulted in the deaths of at least two people and another two missing. Some of the top production regions in Southeast Australia suffered major flooding. Uh, sparking fears of situation will increase the cost of living and amid surging inflation. Residents and communities living on or near any of these rivers, creeks, and streams or in low-lying areas, especially in southern Queens, Queensland, much of the inland New South Wales, Victoria, and northern Tasmania are advised to stay up to date with the latest forecasts and warnings. So rains affecting uh, these areas and it could uh, affect uh, their food and productions uh, of basically cost of living. That's just gonna decrease their situation right there. All right, so please pray for Australia. All right, next. Appeal court temporarily halts Biden student debt cancellation. A federal appeals court on Friday temporarily halted President Biden's student debt relief plan, preventing the government from moving forward with the debt cancellation it had said could start as early next week. So pretty much the student uh, debt forgiveness is halted. All right, next. FBI found documents containing classified intel on Iran and China at Mar-a-Lago. During its August search of former President Trump's Florida home and club, FBI agents seized about 13,000 documents, more than 100 of them classified. The FBI found documents containing classified intelligence regarding Iran and China and former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago's home, say two people familiar with the matter. The Washington Post was first to report that the intelligence on Iran and China was found at Trump's Florida residence and club during the FBI's recent search of the property. The Post reported, but NBC News has not confirmed, that at least one of the documents seized by the FBI describes Iran's missile program. That is very dangerous. Alright, next. Gas stoves could leak chemicals linked to cancer. Mounting evidence shows. In California, especially leaky stoves expose people to indoor concentrations of benzene up to seven times the state's safety limit. 
Natural gas stoves and ovens can leak harmful chemicals inside homes even when they are not in use. About 47 million U.S. households use such appliances according to the Federal Energy Information Administration. A study published on Thursday in the journal Environmental Science and Technology found at least 12 hazardous air pollutants emitted from gas stoves in California, including benzene, a chemical known to cause cancer, and some people with long-term exposure. The researchers behind the study, a group from the nonprofit Energy Research Institute PSC Health Energy, took gas samples from 159 residential stoves in 16 counties throughout California. They found benzene in 99% of the samples. So that is quite spooky and scary. Alright, next, EMP attack. Chinese physicists simulate nuclear blast against Starlink satellites. So apparently a nuclear blast in near space could create a radioactive cloud over an area as big as New York State, crippling or destroying satellites in near-Earth orbit, according to a new computer simulation conducted by a team of Chinese military scientists. At the Northwest Institute of Nuclear Technology, a research institute run by the People's Liberation Army in Xi'an, researchers developed a model that can evaluate the performance of nuclear anti-satellite weapons at different altitudes and yields with unprecedented detail and accuracy. The simulation results suggest that a 10 mega, uh, megaton warhead, modestly powerful by today's standards, could create a serious threat to satellites if it detonates at an altitude of 80 kilometers or 50 miles. Alright, next. Iranian cargo planes land in Moscow, Russia, while Europe sanctioned Iran for delivery of drones. Military cargo planes flying from Iran landed at Moscow Airport on Thursday and on Friday, on October 20th, at Boeing. 747 cargo plane flew from Tehran to Moscow, according to data from the Flight Radar 24 platform. Another Iranian Air Force aircraft followed on Friday. The Ilyushin IL-76 heavy cargo plane developed in the Soviet Union is now on its way back to Iran. It is believed that both machines have transferred missiles and drones, as well as military personnel. Russia has recently been increasing using Iranian shaded 133 kamikaze drones, according to American military reports. Alright, I'll leave you guys the link to that so you guys can read the rest of that. Alright, next. Florida officials warns thousands of flooded electric vehicles at risk of fire after the hurricane. Florida's top uh, financial officer and fire marshal, Jimmy Patronis, warned that there are huge fire risks across areas of Florida that were submerged by Hurricane Ian due to waterlogged electric vehicles spontaneously erupting into flames. He warned that some of these electric vehicles have already caught fire, while many more are still at risk. Still assessing the fire risk of electric vehicles from Ian, based on uh, registrations, these 4,100 EV vehicles in the area inundated by surge that registered not confirmed impacted. Ask the manufacturers for info. Here is a yard where the EVs are separated in case of fire. Lots of Teslas. So apparently lots of Teslas and other electric vehicle cars are separated and kept in, in a distance from other things because they get spark into fire and uh, just catch on fire and just be destroyed and possibly destroy other things around them. So it is very dangerous to have electric vehicles after they are flooded. Alright, next. Circle K to start selling marijuana at its Florida stores in another big step along America's path to normalizing the use of once taboo plant. Major convenience store uh, chain Circle K will begin selling marijuana at its Florida gas stations. Circle K's foray in the marijuana business will go live in 2023 through a partnership with the Chicago-based Green Thumb Industries, a medical and recreational cannabis wholesaler and retailer with a presence in 15 states. Florida's marijuana maker is the country's second largest, trailing only California. All right, so that is quite interesting. All right, next, GOP governors promise not to mandate 
COVID-19 vaccine for children. Following the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices voting 15-0 to zero to add COVID-19 shots to the children's recommended vaccine schedule, Republican governors have vowed not to institute mandates in their states. The COVID-19 vaccine has been placed as a recommendation from six months uh, of age and older as well as being approved for the federally funded Vaccine for Kids program, which provides vaccines for children at a, a lower to, or no cost to families. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis led the way in promising not to institute any COVID vax mandates. As long as I am Governor of Florida, there will be... Uh, there will not have to be a COVID-19 mandate for children in our schools, DeSantis said. He continued, "That is our decision to make as a, that is your decision to make as a parent. These are new shots. I get a kick out of it when people compare to MMR things that have been around for decades and decades. So they're not going to be pushing uh, the vaccine on to children. It is up to the parent to decide if they want to." vaccinate their children all right let's go to this storm i believe this storm is called let me look at the national uh hurricane center central pacific and eastern pacific i think it, yeah rosalind this storm right here is rosalind off the coast of mexico will be turning into a hurricane and will be affecting the mexican coastline so that is right there off the coast of Mexico as you see here on the left just circulating and turning into a bigger storm it will bring rains possible mudslides and landslides so please make sure if you live along the coast of Mexico to be prepared for this storm all right let's take a look quickly here at the Atlantic and take a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook we have disturbance one with 20 percent chance of cyclone formation in five days a small non-tropical area of low pressure located about 1300 miles east of bermuda is producing limited shower activity although the environmental conditions are forecast to be only marginal conductive uh the development during the next few days the low could still acquire some subtropical or tropical characteristics by early next week while it moves westward to west northwestward at 20 to 25 miles an hour across the sub tropical Atlantic. By the middle of next week, further development appears unlikely as the system is forecast to move over cooler waters and encounter stronger upper-level winds. Additional information on the system, including gale warnings, can be found in the high seas forecast issued by the National Weather Service. Formation chance through 48 hours, low at 10%. And formation chance through 5 days, low at 20%. So it's very low uh, chance of it developing into anything Let's take a look here. This is it here in the middle of the Atlantic. All right, that's it for this video. Hit like and subscribe for more news, and see you guys next time. God bless you guys.